Good morning. Welcome to our live streaming of the Holy Mass. So many throughout the world are crying for help at this time. As the psalmist tells us this morning, we know that our God is listening, ready to heal you and calm your fears. Today we ask God to open our eyes so that we can see, to open our ears so that we can hear, to open our hearts so that we feel God's angels surrounding us with love. May we have faith that each of us will be saved and set free from whatever is holding us back from allowing God to guide us. In this uncertain time, may we take the time to ask the God of peace to bring healing to all. And let us now pause for a moment as we begin. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you heal the sick and dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, light of the world, you call us to turn away from sin and believe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you call us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred. For their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord, the Lord is, is close, close to, to the, the brokenhearted. brokenhearted. 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord, the Lord is, is close, close to, to the, the brokenhearted. Heart. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The, the Lord, Lord is close to the brokenhearted. the Lord be on your heart and on your lips, so that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus moved around about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel to Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of the tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he also went up, not openly, but as if it were in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own. But the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him, because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a concept of God that I think is, is a beautiful one, yet is um, important to hold together two concepts, right? And this is something that is, we find often in our faith, right? In our faith, when we think of Christ, we think of the dual nature of Christ, fully God, yet fully human, Right? There's a concept of our Lord, too, God in general, right? Imminent, yet transcendent. That transcendent image of God that is far away from infinity, who says, be, and it is. But there's also an imminence of God, a nearness, something close. Imagine, think of God in Genesis that second creation account, that one who strolls through the garden and forms humanity from the clay and lovingly breathes life into him. I think from time to time, periodically, humanity tends to focus on one aspect or the other, right? And I think Jesus is doing something important here in this gospel, and it's something for us to remember as well. He's reminding us of the closeness of God. In his encounter with the citizens of Jerusalem, they say, we know him. We know this man. We know where he's from. Therefore, he cannot be the Messiah. He cannot be divine. He cannot be God, right? Jesus contradicts them. He says, yes, you know me. Yes, you know where I am from. And that's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. He reminds them where he is from, sure, certainly, Jesus from Nazareth, but also from the Father. He's reminding them of the nearness 
the closeness of our loving God. As we move forward through this Lent, this Lent where there were some disciplines, I think, that were forced upon us a little bit more sternly, strictly than we had imagined or anticipated at the onset, I think we need to remember that in Jesus in this encounter. We need to remember his nearness, his closeness, his love. He's one of us. He knows our suffering. He knows our joys. He knows our fears. He knows all of it. Every aspect of being human and all that we're going through right now in this awkward, scary time. Let's find this time to reach out to him, to get to know him, to know that he's there, to know that he's with us through all of this, imminent, close, as close as we allow him. And let us continue through this situation in which we find ourselves that can often be one full of anxiety, fear, doubt. But let it, let us, with the love of God, also turn it into a moment where we can come to know that living, loving God who is very, very near. The presence of Christ is our safe place and our strength. Without fear, let us pray for all those in need. For the church, to bring the message of Christ to the world. For pastoral workers, to receive grace and strength as they continue the ministry of the church through these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who use creative ways to show love, may they continue to reach out to those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we continue to have the patience to recognize everyday blessings and miracles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. For those who struggle with fear and anxiety and are feeling overwhelmed, we also pray for doctors, nurses, technicians, and all who work in the medical field, for parishioners, family and friends, in a nursing home, care facility, or in the hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For eternal life, for all who died, they will be cradled in the arms of our loving God, for those who grieve the loss of a loved one, that they are comforted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God of abundant care, we give thanks for each new day and for new opportunities to experience your generous gift of life. We are grateful for the gift of your Son. We implore your help as we faithfully journey through this uncertain time. We ask that you grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. We pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially for Thomas Probertian, Victoria Jelinek, and all the de deceased members of our parishes for whom this Mass is being offered, and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ grant eternal life to those who receive it. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil, Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. communion antiphon. In Christ we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may, we, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.